testimony today in the child pornography trial of singer R. Kelly, witness after witness, identify those on that now infamous sex tape as the alleged victim and R. Kelly. Seal TV's Randy Bellasoma was in the courtroom today, joins us now from 26 in California with more. Randy? Sean, today for the first time we heard testimony that identified those on the tape from someone other than a relative, a friend, or a parent of a friend of the alleged victim. We heard from a former employee of R. Kelly who said at first she did not want to believe that it was him. Lindsay Perryman worked for Robert Kelly on and off from 1999 to 2006, doing everything from cleaning floors to handling the defendant's personal business. She told the court that included driving the alleged victim in the now infamous sex tape to and from his Olympia Fields home. She also testified to often seeing the girl in Kelly's recording studio, sometimes carrying a pillow and an overnight bag. The image that I saw looks exactly like Mr. Kelly, Perryman said, then IDing the female on the tape, citing her facial features and her cheekbones. During cross-examination, defense attorney Mark Martin inquired about Perryman's purported master's degree from a recording conservatory in Arizona, a degree she said took only months to acquire. I didn't go to Oxford or Harvard, no, Perryman replied. Also taking the stand was Jada Burnett, a family friend of the alleged victim. She said the female on the tape was about 12 or 13 at the time and noted her distinctive cheeks and facial structure. However, that's as far as she could go. Here's an exchange during cross-examination by defense attorney Sam Adam Jr. At some point, you'd have had to have seen her naked. You were so close, right? I've never seen her naked. 22-year-old Raven Gangler testified as well, saying the girl on the tape was her friend from junior high. She said that was something that was absolute and said the alleged victim was very proud of her relationship with R. Kelly. R. Kelly said expressionless through most of the day's proceedings, and occasionally he would whisper something to attorney Eddie Jensen. If convicted, he could face up to 15 years. Who are sisters Lindsay Perryman Dunn and Jen Emrich, who defend R. Kelly in part two of Surviving R. Kelly? Now, according to them and what they said in the docuseries, they make it clear that they don't believe any of the accusations of abuse made against R. Kelly. According to what Lindsay said, she says, and I quote, I believe in the American justice system. I do not believe in the justice system that is going on right now in which the public justice system right now, the public is prosecuting R. Kelly, not the police. Lindsay worked for the singer from 1999 to 2007. She started out as his studio manager before moving up to become his personal assistant. Later, she then became his general manager. Emrich worked for R. Kelly from 1999 to 2001. That would be Jen, her twin sister. She started off as an intern before becoming the singer's manager. So he got these two individuals who come in doing minimal work and then working their way up to some type of management for R. Kelly, according to them. In 2016, they began doing some unpaid social media and public relations work for R. Kelly again during their free time in an attempt to help his tarnished image. They would use hashtags that would drive the media to respond. Some of those hashtags were also used by social media pages that have spread unfavorable information about some of R. Kelly's alleged victims. Some of the pages even spread revenge porn images 
of one of the victims according to the docuseries. Now, let me pause right there and say that would be Faith Rogers and her cease and desist that she received from individuals portraying it was coming from R. Kelly. Not to mention the web page, Surviving Lies, which all fits in what they're saying is what is witness intimidation. Both Perryman Dunn and Emmerich social media pages are peppered with posts declaring R. Kelly's innocence. They engage with accuser supporters regularly. Perryman Dunn testified in 2008 at R. Kelly's trial when he was accused of having sex with and urinating on a 14-year-old girl. She says in the docuseries that she watched the tape and identified the girl as a girl she knew. However, she claims now in hindsight the video showed two consensual people having sex. I did not watch a rape, she says. In response to that, cultural critic Dr. Joan Moran argues in the series that we have a legal system that says that we are not allowed to consent. So if they're not consenting by even virtue of age, it's rape. So keep that in mind. She said on this docuseries, she recognized the person in the video and that what she saw was consensual sex. What people with common sense would argue is, well, the video clip in question they're saying is of a minor. So by you saying that you recognize her and that you saw consensual sex, that's your reasoning in saying that it's not rape. Even though we all know children can't consent to sex when they're a minor. That right there sent red flags. And of course, people cleaned it up. But that wasn't the first thing. Because when I first heard these names, it was when I was researching the first trial, which was mentioned. And I knew the fact that Lindsay, one of the twins, had testified. And it wasn't in favor of R. Kelly. So when I saw them emerge on social media and on YouTube, I quite naturally got suspicious. Now, even now, I really don't know their motives, but I just want to show you some of the things that I have observed and experienced. Let's read this article first, which points out exactly what she said at that trial. As mentioned, in the video that you saw at the beginning, she said it was him and she said it was the alleged victim. Now, according to the article by the Rolling Stone, she stated that she is 110% sure that the couple in the video was the girl and R. Kelly. Perryman knew the girl well. She testified that she would often see her show up to Kelly's studio carrying a pillow and an overnight bag. And her job functions expanded. As her job functions expanded, she often would arrange liaisons between the two. What does that sound like to you? Hmm. Then she would say she never suspected any inappropriate behavior. Perryman acknowledged seeing Lisa Van Allen, the supposed third partner in the alleged victim, who was expected to take trial. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that statement tells me one or two things. The fact that either A, 
The girl in the video is Lisa Van Allen, a girl that you're familiar with as well. Or two, you're telling the world that you are aware of what was going on in a sense because you were scheduling these liaisons between the two. You're 110 percent. It's you're 110 percent sure it's him and her. Even though you never saw anything inappropriate. But you got a little more perks with your job. So would that then imply that you were okay being suspicious that something is going on, but not saying anything because you just got a promotion? Those are the two thoughts that come across my head when I read that. So then when I think about everything that I have seen over the Internet, red flags begin to emerge. Now, I'm not saying they have done anything, but what I am saying is certain things don't sit well. Like, for example, the fact that according to these twins, they are the ones who made contact with Kip through Rocky Bivens, another person who has said some things about R. Kelly, and through getting in contact with Kip, the twins were trying to verify another now social media influencer by the name of Dana J. So with all that being said, there was a lot of friction going back and forth internally between the people who knew each other. So when I began to see them falling out, I started to question what's really going on. Is this a smoke screen? One minute you see these people supporting each other and then the next minute you see them trying to put the focus all on one individual. You have these twins saying that they pretty much support the su surviving lies, which is being mentioned with this whole witness intimidation storyline. You got the fan pages going back and forth with the twins, and you got other people who say they know R. Kelly going back and forth with the twins. But the icing on the cake was a few days ago when I'm just sitting in one of the fan groups watching this go down and I'm going to include the messages that I shot and let you all decide what do you think about this because these same individuals when I made a specific video last year asking questions about this A&R guy Julius they were the first ones jumping up making posts about me there was no message to see if there was misinformation passed or nothing. So then when I seen other people following in Lee, it made me question them as well. It seems like we are seeing a pattern of people who just always want to be the first to deliver information. Rather, they know for sure if it's true or not. And then when they receive a little backlash from providing information and it comes out that it's incorrect the first thing that people want to do is redirect the attention to somebody else it seems like we see that time and time again the same people that brought out certain individuals end up turning on that same person and people don't recognize this pattern people have been consistent in leaking per people's personal information and before anybody try to say anything you can go back and look at the things that I've posted because I have common sense to know certain things you are not supposed to post. So the same information that other people went too far with, I got the same information. 
It's just, again, you can't share certain things. But anyways, when I began to realize people using my content to also stir up trouble and have people jumping in my inbox, making posts about me on Twitter, it seemed like to me I might have been saying something of substance that had a lot of people feeling some type of way. Because even if you reflect back on the things that have occurred, it's always centered around the main people who began doing these interviews and the information that was said. Some people didn't pick up on the important things that were said that some people were saying that would give you the side eye because they were busy being distracted by other things that really carried no substance. The same people that will bring somebody out here to the public will then turn around and tell us to cut ties with this individual. And nobody will stop and ask the important questions of why. Then when you hear other people try to give their interpretation as to why, it's always surface level bullshit. It's never really hitting on what I have been displaying this whole year. And that is, there has been a lot of scamming going on, and I feel like that has been the main driving force for a lot of this back and forth bickering between the people who actually know R. Kelly. Let's take this logic or Tory Lanez or any artist for that matter. Think about the fact that they're all coming out with the same stories of how these record labels are not paying people. So we see how some people will act when they feel like they're not getting paid properly or something's not going their way, the first thing they're going to do is bash somebody. Isn't that obvious? That's what we have seen with R. Kelly. And how some of these people, whether knowingly or not, have fed into some of these narratives they have been told, either by former employees, former friends, people who are still portraying to be employees. Either way it go. Some of the things they say should stand out. The more these people talk, the more they make their motivations pretty clear. Because let's go back to when I mentioned this A&R guy and how people were so quick to jump down my throat about some simple questions about this man's music. It made me wonder, while R. Kelly is in jail fighting for his life, so many people are making plans, throwing, a, throwing around words such as power of attorney and setting up tours overseas and doing this and doing that. And nobody is asking the right questions. People are just so blindly accepting these things being said. And these people that claim to know R. Kelly are so quick to be ready to cover up and throw the blame on other people to defend certain individuals. So it should make you wonder, who are they really supporting? What are their real motives? How can you post things publicly, then turn around and get mad and jump down people's throats, make posts about them, and all this extra stuff when nobody made you do these things. When people go out their way to vouch for other people, it makes me side out of them too. For the simple fact, their lives are not being held hostage at this point. So if my questions are offensive to some of these people that claim to know R. Kelly, maybe it's because something just ain't right. 
Now, I don't have time to sit here and play with these dum-dums on YouTube that are irrelevant. There's a whole lot of people that y'all should be asking questions about. Too many people have been around this man for nobody to not know any of these accusers coming forth with these allegations. If you ask me, somebody in the background more than likely was facilitating all this extra stuff. And those people are the ones people are covering for. Who's really supporting R. Kelly? Ask yourself. Stop accepting these stories that just don't add up or sit well. Now, who can judge the motives of the actions we see? Personally, some of these things are just eye-opening. Because the very same people that make these strange movements will be the very same people so quick to jump on their social media and start lashing out at people for things that they have done or said to make people question them. Now, what I saw the other day was this. I was sitting in a fan group. And I saw one of these twins lashing out at someone who I have seen putting in a lot of work as well, trying to support R. Kelly in the way they feel fit. Let's take a look at this conversation. And you decide, what do you think about these people and the things that they're displaying before us? Because it should be a no-brainer as to why R. Kelly is in the position he's in when people behave in certain ways when they get mad. And then as we saw with some of these people participating in surviving R. Kelly, then they want to be remorseful after they've already said so much slanderous bullcrap. It's clear to me R. Kelly is not guilty of these charges. So stay tuned as we're going to go into these charges as I just got a link to some new documents I don't hear nobody else speaking on. Stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to my Patreon because actually I'm going to give my patrons the first chance to see all of the videos I put out from this day forward. First.